Who does that like? Because it's not about the... What? Beyond, what's been the feedback for your performance on Oceans? Yeah, um, people said thank you. Some people thank me, I don't know, it sounds weird, but for the high note, because they're like, it's that... It's that moment when I, I get emotional, just, you know, this. Um, yeah, people just said thank you, because it's like, maybe that moment for them is like, the moment where they just don't know, like, words to cry out to God, or like, like, words to explain a situation, and like, it just kind of like, unlocks things. And people have said that, it's like, giving expression to something that I didn't know that I could say to God or like have that moment of like this is so hard yet I trust you and yeah it was amazing what people have said so thank you Jesus thank God Romans chapter 8 hey Romans 8 Romans 8 
Make one, James, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Just a quick review as he pulls that up. So Romans, Romans 7, we were looking at um, <coughs> a little problem that Paul talked about, a problem that mankind had that um, the Jew had under the law. The problem was a sin nature. The sin nature kept mankind from walking out the the laws of God, the things that God was instructing us to do. Um, the law was good. It was perfect. There, was, there wasn't a problem with the law. Hebrews said the problem was with them. The problem was with the sin nature. The sin nature would not allow mankind to walk these things out. So <clears throat> Paul talked about a little struggle that he was going through and then transitioning into Romans 8 it shows the solution to that struggle and solution was the new creation the solution was not only the new creation the new heart that we've talked about so many times from Ezekiel 36 that enables us to to walk out love to walk in love and we talked about that the new creation was a new heart that God gave us and this new heart, a picture of it could be found over in 1 Corinthians 13, and we've looked at it so many times, where it gives a description of love, what love is. Our original nature in Adam was love. When Adam decided to do his own thing, that nature was perverted. <coughs> and I've said it many times, he went from being selfless to selfish. He became self-focused, right? And if you're self-conscious, you can't be God-conscious. Right? And we're supposed to keep our minds set on things above. So when this change took place, the new heart that we received, 1 Corinthians 13, this new heart that we received is what? It's patient, it's kind, it's long suffering, it's temperate, it's meek, right? It's gentle. This is so opposite of the old nature that we have to go through a process called what? Mind renewal. Right, We have to find out exactly what was placed on the inside of us. Because we've lived, for me, not really coming into the kingdom, I'd say probably to my mid-20s or late 20s when I got saved in prison was when I really began to see truth. So I had, just say, 20, 28 years of baggage that I was carrying, that I've been carrying, and now I had to reprogram my thinking, right? And the Bible talks about it in Romans 12, and we talked about it many times, Romans 12, 1 and 2, where it says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? Renewing of your, Renewing mind. Of your mind. So if we're living a life that's not transformed, an untransformed life, it's going to go back to mind renewal, right? That's going to reveal to us, man, I need to get back and I need to get into the Word and allow the Holy Spirit to begin and the Word of God to begin to transform me. Right, and that word transform is metamorpho, and it's the same word uh, that you see that takes place when when a caterpillar caterpillar is changed into what a butterfly, right? And it takes something that's really ugly and it turns it into something really beautiful and graceful, and that's what God wants to do. And we talked about that in Romans twelve one and two, and then we also talked about Second Corinthians chapter ten verses three through five, and it talks about a form of spiritual warfare. Y'all remember what that discussed? Anybody? Say the scripture. Again. Second Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, where it says the weapons of our warfare are I'm not carnal, carnal but whatever. mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Strong. Right? And basically what it says in, in a simple form is if we if we have old thoughts, right? Because it says in Romans, we're going to look at it in a minute, to be carnally minded is what? Death. Mm -hmm. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So when those carnal thoughts come, like the enemy tries to come in with old thoughts, right? 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5 simply says to what? Cast down those thoughts. And this is a practice that we have to be good at, right? And in order to get good at this thing, we have to continue to do it, and we'll get better and better as we go, right? I want to give you an example uh, that just popped into mind. is um, you know, offense for me, like to get offended, uh, for instance, for instance, with my wife, like yesterday, my our Sunday, my wife Saturday night, my wife went to Atlanta. And she was gone uh, all day, and then and then yesterday she was like late, 
and I'm just you know all the families in town and I'm like man it's it's sometimes it feel I feel like <coughs> She's focused on everybody, but like what we got going on. You know what I mean? Like, mm. and the enemy like brings that thought up, and then offense comes. Like, I'm about to get offended, and I'm about to be like text or something. You know what I mean? Like text her, like why? Can, you can't be on my fight. You know, just like I'm about to get ugly. Like I feel it in my spirit, and boom, Holy Spirit says, "You, you got an awesome wife." Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. You get what I'm saying? Like the, the, the Holy Spirit comes right then and says, Hey, no. Shalom, shalom. We're the the gift of the the Holy Spirit, the peace yeah. of the Holy Spirit said, Boom. You know, and I was just like, I texted her back, no problem, babe, I'll I'll see you. And then what's happened now, I don't know if it's spiritual maturity or or, or what. So then what I do now is I go I'm gonna do so. I cleaned up. I started cleaning up. I cleaned up the playroom. I cleaned up the bedroom. I, you know what I'm saying? I started cleaning up. And then my wife came home and she was like, man, gave me a hug. Sorry I'm late. Cooked it, you know, had dinner ready. Oh, you clean the, clean this. Wow, thanks. You know what I'm saying? It's like the, it, it changed my week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. You, you, yeah. you get in your feelings and get in your flesh. Your old, your old man, your old flesh, and you get in a fence, especially with your wife. Golly, that's the worst thing ever. Then your whole, you know, pans are clanging, and, and, and we go about our duty, so to speak, but we're not in relationship. And uh, and I was just, that's, I just remember how I used to be. And it was just all the time. And I mean, and sometimes still get there, you know what I mean? Sometimes still get offended. But what I've noticed is, is, Whenever now I'm at a place in my walk where when that offense comes, it still comes. The yeah. the thought still comes where yeah. you but it used to be a stronghold and that's where he would sneak in and get in and encamp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he would just do battle on in my mind from there. But now the stronghold's been bulldozed, so the thoughts still come, but he don't have anywhere to camp out. He don't have anywhere to hide out anymore. It's just like snatch that thing down and then it now I'm in a process where not only do I just snatch that thing out, but I do the opposite of what he wants. Counterintuitive. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right. Oh, like, oh, you came, you came at me. I'm about to come at you. Yeah. You came at me and tried to attack me and get me off. Now I'm gonna do something super out of character. <laughs> Clean something up. You know what I'm saying? Or, or if some, and that's honestly, if somebody's like comes and there's an offense and somebody tries to, and not, not even that they're trying to offend me, but because that's not on them. He yeah. he can't. He has no power to offend me. Yeah. You, no matter what you cuss me out, or, that's on me. Yeah. That's my Holy Spirit. Yeah. So now, not only do I not get offended, but I do, I just, Amen. well, I, re, I do the opposite of what the enemy, I kick him in the teeth. Amen. And I, and I love that person. And I, you know, they might come at me super crazy, and I might just bless them, mm. love them. You know what I'm talking about, right, you guys, right? Yeah. 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 And that, and that changes history. You understand? That changes history when we start to get that. We gotta get we gotta bull down those bull those down those strongholds. We can't I can see that eventually on top of whenever it's a couple years ago I was a couple years ago I was driving a company truck, ladder flies off the top, I lose it. And next thing you know, Josh is behind me. He's like, Hey, uh, what's the ladder on the truck? Super loose. I'm like I look up, I'm like, Oh crap. Like so I go back, look for it, it's gone, it was you know, nice fiberglass ladder. <laughs> Like heated, and then uh, the next thing you know, he like he, he just uh, he comes and brings me like a hundred dollar Milwaukee book bag, and it's just like it's okay. I love you, it's okay. Like when he wanted to, <laughs> yeah, yeah, good stuff. But you you get it, and it may be different for different people. Strong yeah. those strongholds. It may be lust. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes a, a, a thought will pop in my head, boy, I don't, that stronghold's gone. And if you don't get rid of that stronghold, it'll camp out on you. And then it'll, it'll fester and it'll change into something. It'll change from thought to action. And we, we don't want that. Yeah. We do not want that. We got we to gotta tear those things down. And sometimes those strongholds uh, come into the physical realm too. You know what I mean? Like some people have triggers, physical triggers or whatever. We got to. 
we got to bulldoze that junk. We got to get rid of that. You know what I'm saying? We can't go there anymore. We can't go to that place anymore. Yeah. Or we got anytime I go to uh, Miss So and So's house, I'm taking somebody with me. Amen. You understand? We got to start putting some things in, into place to protect ourselves as men of God spiritually. We can't go down that same road we used to. We can't go to that same place. We got to change out who we talk to, who we who we interact with, and how and that. Talk. What's that? How we talk. Yeah, how we talk, what we do, what we think. You know, and it's and it's a process, and there's grace. For us, but man, we got to tear them down. Amen. Amen. Tear them down. Sorry about that. No, it's awesome. Good example. So, <laughs> does everybody have the little insert that I handed out? It's got twelve sixteen on the top. Got it. I'm it's gonna got... scratch that out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put some twelve thirty one in there. Nice. <laughs> We're just gonna kind of. We didn't complete it. We got about halfway through it. We're going to go down it. I'm going to try to finish up half of uh, page 5 all the way down through verse 29, Romans 8, 29. So coming down on your handout, um, we just talked about Romans 7. We did the Romans 7 review um, and coming into Romans 8, 1. Under the law and the sin nature, we were bound to condemnation. So that was one of the things that... Um, Paul talked about, and of course in Romans 8, 1, it says, those who are in Christ, there's what? Therefore, no more condemnation. So when we're in Christ, and we begin to walk according to our new nature, it alleviates all that condemnation, guilt and shame that used to be there when we were, you know, before we were saved, and then also prior to walking in this new life. Um, Romans 8, 2, it says, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is our new nature and has send us, set us free from the law of sin and death, which was our old nature. So, the Bible talks about in Hebrews and also a little bit in Ezekiel, but more so in Hebrews, it talks about the law has been written on our heart, right? So the law of love has now been written on our heart, on our new nature, and it has set us free from the old nature. Okay? It has set us free. Verse 3 and 4 um, on our, on our handout says that we're now able to walk out the law of love through the power of the Holy Spirit in our new nature in Christ. The life that God desired, the struggle that Paul went through, and it talks about it in Romans 8 and 3. It says, what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did so by sending his own son in the light, likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, Romans 8, 4, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit so those who walk according to our new nature guess what we're now able to walk this thing out that's right the law under the law Romans 7 Paul wasn't able to do it so God sent Jesus Jesus crushed sin he crushed hell he crushed the grave right he he ascended next to the father and now we're seated together with him in that victory. We're seated in that place of victory. And now the victory of the cross has given us the power over that old nature. The thing that the law was unable to do. See, the law was just a schoolmaster. The law was just a tutor. The law pointed to Jesus. It revealed to us, you are not able to do this on your own. You don't have the power to do this. Right? You need a Savior. And God knew that. That was the whole purpose of it. To point, and there's so many people still today who living under the law. Some people, you know, like people who still try to fulfill parts of the law, they still don't see that Jesus Christ was the answer to that. And they still have rituals, and they still have things that they do to try to to try to please God. And God said, "No, the only way you can please me is by faith in my Son." And when you do this, there's a change, and now. You can walk this thing out. The thing that the law couldn't do, now you're able to do it. Amen? Amen. Verse 6, Romans 8, 6. The carnal mind needs to be replaced with the mind of Christ, and that's what we've been talking about. What did we, y'all remember the example that we gave of the mind of Christ? Philippians chapter 4. Right? Philippians chapter 4 says, whatever is lovely, whatever is pure, whatever is of good report, whatever is praiseworthy, Right? Meditate on these things. And that goes back to 2 Corinthians 10. If it's not lovely, 
if it's not pure, if it's not of a good report, if it's not praiseworthy, what do we got to do? We got to blast it. Pull it down. Blast it down. Yeah. This is the mind of Christ. It's odd to us because we, we, we have had the, in the old man, the old nature, prior to being born again, and even some of it coming, trying to come into the new man, mm -hmm. having to resist it. But in the, let's just say in the past, you know, lustful thoughts, maybe we would run with it. Maybe we'd let it take us some, somewhere. Maybe an angry emotion. You know, maybe we'd let it take us a little too far. You know, maybe an offense tries to get in. Right? And instead of resisting it, what do we allow it to do? We call up some buddies. Oh, you're not going to believe what so-and-so did. You know, we call up three or four friends, and they, then they tell three or four friends, and then they tell, and the next thing you know, you know, you've really probably per, really warped the perception of people on, some, on a person. Right? You've created this picture of a person. Maybe it's not true. Maybe that person just got out of character for a moment, and that's not really their character. And they, and they said or did something they shouldn't have done, and now we've got 100 different people with this warped perception of that person. That's the danger of getting into offense and getting in, into gossip and backbiting and all those things, right? It sows seeds of bitterness of a person that's not true, right? And we don't want to get into that place. So now we have to, where we used to have this stinking thinking, as they said, or warped thinking, we want to replace it with things that are lovely. We want to replace it with things that are pure. We want to replace it with the good report. You know, we want to we want to replace those harsh words that we used to speak with what kind words. <clears throat> the Bible defines prophecy as, as this in the New Testament. It says prophecy is words that edify, exhort, and comfort. Right? We want to build people up. And hey, we're all growing in this thing. None of us have none of us have arrived. We're getting there. Yes, we are getting there. We have come a long way, all of us have, and, we're, and we still have a long way to go, but we are in this journey, and God is changing us. Um, none of us have reached perfection yet. We won't reach that until, you know, um, we, we are called to the other side, but to be with Jesus, but we're getting there. We're getting better. You know, we're all getting better, and I thank God that I'm getting better, and the Holy Spirit is working this thing out in me. And just as we, as we practice this thing every day, as we put these love muscles to work, guess what happens? They get stronger. Mm -hmm. And they get stronger. And they get stronger. And the flesh is kept under subjection. And the soul is kept in check. Right? And things begin to get easier. Um, I want to say this, and we've talked about it several times. Um, a lot of the pressure that we encounter is because of what? The pressure is because of the destiny. The destiny that's on our life. Right? The Bible says when we come into Christ, we're promised what? We're promised persecution. We're promised tribulation. Jesus said it himself. He says, in this world, you will have what? Tribulation. Yeah. But be of good cheer because why? I have overcome the world. And that, that pressure is what really elevates us. Like really gets us to where we need. He wants us to be. I mean... And, as long as we make the right choice in it. Yeah. 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 If, but if you're sold out, you're like, no matter what, I'm going to praise you. Yeah. That's, you know, when you get to the other side of the storm, you're like, I've arrived. What? Like, uh, how did that happen? I thought this was going, I thought the shit was sinking, but wow, I made it to the, I made it to the other side. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I've, so I've just seen that in my, in my life. Like, how did I end up here? What was through the storm? Yep. Staying focused and really keeping your eye, keeping, and we've talked about this many times, but just keeping your eye on Jesus. Trust, you know? tru yeah. trust in Him no matter what. No matter what it looks like, you're like, I love you and I'm going to trust you. That's it. Amen. The minute, the minute that Jesus proclaimed who He was, right? Luke chapter 4. He spoke that day in the synagogue. He got up, He read the scroll. He turned to Isaiah 61. He proclaimed that I am the one that the Old Testament referred to. I am he. And then he sat down. And the moment that he proclaimed his destiny, people yeah. wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to throw him off a cliff. And 
all that pressure came from what? His destiny. His destiny was to what? To save the entire world. Yeah. And the enemy just turned the heat up. And that's what he does. See, the enemy wants to get us to, to, to give up, to cave in, and to quit. So he brings pressure. And a lot of times, like Joshua was saying, he doesn't come in a red suit with a pitchfork. He'll, he'll come, and, and I'm not saying, you know, she was operating. No, no, no. Yeah, but oftentimes, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, our spouse, yeah. our children, who are so innocent, you know, they, you know, maybe they're getting a little rambunctious, and it's easy to, like, maybe, you know, get, maybe try to get upset with them a little bit more than you should. But, you know, the enemy will use all kind of different methods to try to get at you, people on the roads, co-workers, just all different reasons. But we have to stay stay focused on Jesus. We have to stay in love. You know, we have to cast down those thoughts. When he tries to come in, the Bible says he come, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will, what, raise up a standard against him? That's the Word of God, you know? Um, I actually have a testimony about this. I was talking to us about it yesterday. Um, I went up to New Hampshire for a week, and uh, it's funny. Uh, God had put it on Chance's heart to text him to say, like, just because you're on vacation doesn't mean that you can mess up. Like, you are who you are. And I was like, don't worry, bro. I got this. For an entire week, I was around drinking and people smoking cigarettes and smoking weed. And, like, me and my dad have not always seen eye to eye. I can tell him one thing, and it's not always true. And on the way back down, he's like, you know, I'm really proud of you. It's like, why is that? And he's like, well, you know, you told me that you quit uh, doing the things that you used to do. You quit drinking. You quit smoking cigarettes. But I didn't know if I believed you with, you know, your tra uh, track record. And he said, but for the last week, you literally were surrounded from the time you woke up to the time you went to sleep. And uh, he, he's like, nobody who didn't quit could just be around it for that long and just do it at, uh, to show faith. And uh, uh, I, the only thing I could say is I looked at him and I was like, I don't, I don't need those things. I got Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. stronghold got bulldozed down. Amen. Yeah. That's so good. Thank you and, for sharing uh, that. I mean, I had temptations at first, like uh, some things more than others, but I just, all I did was pray about it, and God answered prayers. Amen. 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 Thank you. I guess these classes are paying off a little bit. <laughs> so, uh, Romans 8 and 8. Um, let's come on down. It says, those who are in the flesh cannot please God so I believe this is speaking about um, this is more than just talking about just walking in the flesh I believe it's talking to referring to unbelievers who cannot please God okay and the reason why I say that is because God's not pleased by our works God is pleased by our what our faith he's, he's pleased by our faith because the Bible says without faith it's what impossible to please him so coming into the kingdom, coming into the how do we come into the kingdom? We come in by faith, right? Faith in the cross, and we become born again. When we become born again, God looks at us and He says, "This is my son, you know, in whom I'm whom I'm well pleased, you know, or this is my daughter in whom I'm well pleased, right?" And I believe in that moment, you know, the Bible says that He, the Spirit, bears witness with our spirit that we're what that we're sons. You know, he says, I'm pleased with you. So come on down to, let's look at verse 9. But you are not in the flesh. Let's just say the old, the old nature. You're not in the old nature, but you're in what? The Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, wait, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Okay. So if the Spirit dwells in you, you're what? It's, it's an indication that you're born again. You're no longer in the old nature. The old man is dead, and now the Spirit of God dwells in you, and this is an indication that you have been born again, right? You have the Holy Spirit. Because prior to being born again, you could not have the Holy Spirit. We're not talking about the baptism. We're just talking about the infilling, 
right? The indwelling. All right. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he's what? He is not his. So there it is. If anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, then he is not his. Verse 10. And if Christ in you is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. I like what the... Can you pull the NIV up on that, Joshua? Yes, sir. In that particular verse. I like what the... It'll kind of help you understand this. But if Christ is in you, then even through your body, even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. Amen. Amen. So, when we, when we came into this world because of what Adam did, the Bible says sin entered the world. Guess what's attached to that sin? Death. death yeah. So this body is dying. And Paul talks about that. And we'll probably look at it later on. But this body is, is dying. This body is aging. But the spirit is what? Giving it life. Giving it life. And the Spirit is being renewed. If, we spend, if we're spending time in the Word every day, if we're spending time in, in, in prayer, the Spirit is being renewed, but the body is still moving. It's, it's going to, I mean, if, if Jesus doesn't come back, the body's going to die and it's going to go in the ground. And then one day we'll receive resurrected bodies. But this body is moving towards that place. But however, while we're here, the Spirit is what? Mm-hmm. Giving it life. All right? And let's take a look at that in verse 11. It says, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And we can go back to the New King James. <clears throat> I'll just read it. I'll read it from the New King James and then we'll talk about it. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Okay, so this is talking about a, di- a couple of different things, Right? So one thing it's talking about is a future resurrection, right? A resurrected body. Another thing it's talking about for the pre- this present moment, this present time, it's talking about a life that's been placed on the inside of us, the life of God, coupled with the Holy Spirit, is giving life to our what? Mortal. Our mortal bodies. So this is how we're able to type. Some people are able to tap into a, a divine health, if you will, our healing. When we pray for people... Right. What happens is, is there is a life is released. There's a release of life from inside of us, from the Holy Spirit that's inside of us, and it's released into that person that we're praying for, right? And this life is also given what? Life to our mortal bodies, right? And some people are able to tap into that more than others. And, and of course, lifespans are, some lifespans are longer, but it's just nice to know that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that same power dwells on the inside of us. Man, that is powerful. The same life that raised Jesus from the dead, He was in the grave for three days. Three days. That same life that brought Him back is on the inside of us. And it's, it says it's given life to our what? Mortal. Mortal. That means right now, life is being released. So when we have a sickness or something that comes against us, we can begin to release that faith and that life, and it brings life to our bodies. It brings healing to our bodies, right? We're not going to need healing when we get to heaven. We need healing now. When we get to heaven, everything's going to be made new. We need healing now. We've been given a commission to go out, to preach the gospel, not just by word, but by what? Demonstration. And if we're not walking in this thing, how are we going to be able to release it? And I believe coming into this new year, I believe that this is going to be a year of many signs and wonders. I believe this is going to be a year that the Spirit, as Joel talks about, the Spirit is going to be poured out. It's already being poured out upon all flesh. And sons and and, and daughters and old men are they going to dream dreams? And there's going to be great visions, right? And the power of God, I believe, as we approach this, these end days, these end times, the power of God is just going to begin to grow more and more and more. 
right? And we're stepping into something that we, we've never seen before. We're stepping into an unprecedented time. And God wants us to get a revelation because 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 says what? Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. So when things begin to come in, we can begin to stand on that word. When the enemy begins to come in, we can release the word of God like a flood, right? When we release the word of God and that light is released, the darkness cannot comprehend it. It can't. And sometimes we don't see it. Sometimes maybe we'll pray for a situation and it seems to linger, but we just have to stand on the word. Ephesians 6 talks about standing and standing and standing. And when all you've done all you can do, what? Stand. Keep standing on the word. Don't allow it to, the pressure comes in because of what? The word's sake. Persecution comes because of the word. Don't allow that persecution to pull you away from God's truth. Stand on it no matter what. So the same power that raised Jesus from the dead has given life to our mortal bodies. And that same life is released as we pray for people in the streets every day when we're out there. It's released and it's awesome. Let's come on down. Twelve through sixteen in the Passion Translation, Josh, please. In the TPT. Can you read it for me? Yes, sir. Thank you. So then, beloved ones, the flesh has no claims on us at all, and we have no further obligation to live in obedience to it. For when you live controlled by the flesh, you are about to die. But if the life of the spirit puts to death the corrupt ways of the flesh, we will taste his abundant life. The mature children are God of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. And you do not receive the spirit of religious duty leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. But you have received the spirit of full acceptance enfolding you into the family of God and you will never feel orphaned for as he rises up within us our spirits join him in saying the words of tender affection beloved father for the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as he whispers into our innermost being you are God's beloved child that's pretty fire TV. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Man. <coughs> Y'all get that? Man, we are the sons of God. And God's saying that. Verse 16 says, The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. And that's what He's always telling us. Even when we. Even when he screw, even when we when we make a mistake, it's kind of like the example that Chance gave. You know, Chance made a mistake, and and Josh came up and he blessed him. You know, he's saying, "Man, you're all right. No, don't worry about it. You're good." You know, you made a mistake. It's all good. I got you. That's what the Father does. We make a mistake, and man, I think we're all growing in this thing. You know, see somebody mess up, and sometimes we want to bring judgment, but God just says comes up and says son you made a mistake and I love you comes up gives us a big hug right hey, and there's a release yeah sometimes I want to bring a left jab and a right hook yeah that's the cool thing the kindness of God changes you you know like, that's what that's what's changed my mind that's what's changed my mind is like I've messed up and God says look not only am I gonna forgive you I'm going to fix this. I'm going to fix this for you. And then I'm going to bless you, like give you something, grace, you didn't even deserve. Mm. And that's what's, that's what's changed my mind. Mm. But judgment doesn't work. Mm. You can see the whole law. Oh, yeah. It brings death. Mm. It'll mess up a relationship, too. Quick. Oh, judgment. Yeah, it doesn't work. Especially in a marriage, like yeah. you said, it could cause it could something like that could sp flow out into the whole week. And yeah, but, yeah, yeah. And you, God doesn't even hear your prayers. The word says, "Yeah, <laughs> won't even hear your prayers." So good. 
So, you know, the orphan, the, it says we're no longer orphans and now we're sons. And we cry out, Abba, Father. But the, the orphan mindset would be like what you just said, Justin. Like James and John, they saw these people that weren't really rolling with them. They were kind of like in a different circle. And they wanted to what? They wanted to call down fire from heaven and zap them. <laughs> and Jesus rebuked them. He says, you don't know what, what manner of spirit you are. Like, they're good. You know, I didn't, I didn't come to do that. You know, that was the judgment of the Old Testament. You know, and they were trying to bring that same mindset. But we're not, we don't, we don't have that nature to do those things anymore. But we just have to reprogram our, ourselves and, and understand, all right, how am I going to respond in this situation? How am I going to, what's my thought press process going to be? What's my reaction going to be? What are my words going to be? You know, to bring about uh, God's results in a situation. And I, I just want to say, share something real quick. In, in some of those situations, you know, I can usually just sit there and say, yeah, well, well I, I don't want to judge them. Bob, I'm going to let drive them right up, up a hook, up a cook. But actually, I'm going to tell you something, man, that's just happened to me in my life since I got saved. Actually, prior to, to my being saved, was this, uh, and, you know, I, don't, I don't know, I, it's not really not in the Bible about a basic instinct God gives some of us. And I'm not saying I have it, but I do have it. I, I'm going to tell you I do have it. And I was talking to you about before that in that situation, in the heat of the moment or whatever's going on, what I would normally do in the past sometimes, violence, bam, violence, right? But now, and I, I, I like I said, mentioned before, I don't like it. Most of the time I do, sometimes I don't. Is that basic instinct of counterintuitive reactions, just as Jesus would do, shows up. I had no more say. It's like autopilot. Press autopilot. God says autopilot. I'm going to go because I'm going to love this other child through you. Normally, yeah, left cook, upper right cook. cook. No, no, no. It's, it's like my mind blacks out and shows this individual a level of love that I didn't do. It's like, whoa, God, really? You really love me? Whatever you that obey, way. you're slave to. Whatever you obey. So if you obey the flesh, when that time comes, you're a slave. You're, a slave. you're already a slave. You're going to go straight to the uppercut, right? But if you obey the word, when that time comes, no you're a slave. Sense. You're, I have no sense you're a slave to that. righteousness. You don't love this person. That's right. Amen. So we're just going to finish this last couple of verses on this page, on this insert. Um, 16, 17. Verse 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we're children of God, of children and heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if we indeed suffer with him, that we may also be glorified. So, on your notes, I said the suffering that Paul's referring to aren't things that Jesus paid for on the cross, like sickness or poverty. We're, we're to resist these things. What he's talking about is the persecution that comes in. That's the suffering that we talked about earlier, right? And, and we talked about how when, when a vision is given, when a destiny is sown inside of our heart, what happened when Jesus stepped, began to step into his destiny, the persecution came. And it says that in Mark chapter 4, and I've got that in there. Persecution comes for the word's sake, right? So Josh spoke about if we... If we press into the word of God in the storm, in the trial, when we come out, we come out what? Stronger. Yeah, right. What everything that we need, everything that we need, it says that we, in verse 17, it says that we are heirs of God. We are heirs of God. We are heirs of God. Can you, I mean, can y'all just think about that for a minute? We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. In other words, everything that in covenant, by covenant, everything that Jesus has, what? Belongs to us. And it's on the inside of us. Everything that we need to fulfill our destiny. Everything that we need to release the power of God in every situation in our life. We have become heirs of that if we what? If we make it through the suffering. If we make it through the trial. Right? If we make it through the storm. Right? There's an assignment over here, but to get to the, in order to get to the assignment, there's some things that we're going to have to go through. 
There's some things that are going to be coming against us to keep us from fulfilling that assignment. If you read Mark chapter 4, you'll see what I'm talking about. Mark chapter 4 and Mark chapter 5. In Mark chapter 4, it says the sower sows the word and Satan comes immediately to steal the word. Right? And then it says persecution comes for the word's sake. Okay? And then it says that Jesus spoke to the disciples prior to them crossing over this body of water. And what did he say? What did Jesus say to them? He said, let us go to the other side. So Jesus is calling us to a place. He's calling us to our destiny. Coming into this new year, he's saying, let us begin to proceed towards our destiny to the other side. And what happened? A storm arose. And they began to freak out. <laughs> and which is just, you know, an old, an old mindset and, and still tries to creep in today. But we have to tear down those strongholds. If Jesus says we're going to the other side, right? And those negative thoughts and fears and unbelief and all that stuff starts to try to come in. We've got to replace it with what? Things that are lovely. Things that are pure things that are a good report, things that are praiseworthy. Wait a minute, devil. God told me I was going to the other side. God told me I had an assignment. He told me I was going to complete, he was going to complete the work that he started in me until the day that he comes back. He told me that he was never going to leave me nor forsake me. He told me that he didn't give me the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Anxiety, I resist you. Depression, I resist you. I'm no longer a slave of fear. I'm a son. God's not going to leave me without what I need to make it through this. And we just stand on the word. Stand on the word, right? So he rebuked him and he said, he spoke to the storm and he calmed the storm and he rebuked him and he said, hey, I've been with you the whole time. I've given you authority. I've given you power. I've showed you how to operate, right? And then when they finally, he calms the storm and, and they finally get over to the other side, there was somebody there. The assignment was there. Who was the assignment? The assignment was the cutter. It was the demoniac. He was cutting himself. And we see this so many times a day. He was, he was on the other side, right? And Jesus was able to, to do what? To set him free. Right? But if they would allow the storm to stop them, if Jesus would allow the storm to stop them and they said, oh, this is a great storm. Let's go back. Right. Man, that man never would have got set free. And not only did he get set free, he went back into his town and revival was released. Why? Because they didn't allow the persecution. They didn't allow the storm that was designed to stop them. They didn't allow it to stop them. They kept going. They kept going. And, and when I look out today, you know, that you guys, I see a bunch of guys who have faced some storms in life, faced some trials, faced some tribulations, and you didn't allow it to stop you. And you're still pressing forward. And God's looking down and he's saying, man, you're my son. I'm well pleased with you. Let's keep it going. But guess what? There's more. There's more. The Bible says we go from glory to glory to glory. And he's releasing something on the inside of us, and we've been talking about it. It's unprecedented. We've never seen it. We've never seen it in this world. We've never seen it in our life. And Jesus said, the works that I do, you'll do what? Greater. Even greater. And God's calling us into the greater. He's calling us into the double, and I believe this is going to be a year of just unprecedented signs and wonders. And God's calling us to join him in, that, in this place. Amen. So we'll go ahead and get ready to close out with that. If the enemy can steal the word from our hearts, then he can keep it from producing the fruit that God desires. That's why Proverbs says in Proverbs 4 that we have to what? Guard our hearts above everything else. Right. Testimonies? I got an announcement. Quest, announcements. Who's all? Y'all come up a little closer. Listen. You know, tonight's New Year's. In times past, it's been our habit to go out and just tie one on, right? 